Now, if you're after a budget smartphone these days, I wouldn't be surprised at all if you're more confused than absolutely anyone watching a Christopher Nolan film. It really does feel like every other day there's a new cheapy phone being released by Oppo or Realme or Xiaomi or Motorola or a slew of other manufacturers. So if you're shopping around, it's definitely a bit of a head scratcher. And if you actually review the buggers for a living like I do, well, it gets pretty damn intense at times. But anywho, I've made it my personal life mission to try out as many of these budget-friendly smartphones as possible. And this right here is my roundup of the best £300 and under budget handsets you can grab right now in the UK in 2020. And I've already rounded up my pick of the best £200 and under smartphones. Go check that out if your wallet is even emptier. And for more of the latest greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. Now, one of my favorite smartphones in this price bracket right now is definitely the Redmi Note 9 Pro from Xiaomi. Just 250 quid bags you a fully featured phone with impressive specs, all wrapped up in a proper glass frame. It's a bit of a stunner in all kinds of ways. Crammed inside is Qualcomm's Snapdragon 720G chipset, which is ideal for gaming on a budget. You can cap fools left and right in PUBG Mobile with a smooth as butter frame rate, while the usual gamer tools are on hand to block annoying messages and even record all of that hot action action so you can relive your best murders whenever you like. And battery life is also sterling thanks to the massive 5020 milliamp cells stuffed inside. You'll definitely not be caught short even during a super intensive day. MIUI 12 should be coming to the Note 9 Pro soon, bringing back the apps tray thank Christ while also adding in more features like a proper always on display. And I love kicking back with some Disney Plus on the Redmi Note 9 Pro thanks to that mighty 6.67 inch full HD IPS screen. Well, the Bluetooth smarts are dependable and you even get a headphone jack, huzzah. And as if that wasn't already plenty of reason to go and grab yourself one right now, then the excellent camera tech should definitely win you over. Because the Redmi is one of the very best handsets for photo and video capture at this budget price, producing very respectable results, even in quite testing conditions. And another solid sub £300 smartphone comes courtesy of Motorola. This charming slab of plastic right here is the Moto G8 Plus, and it's a bit of a stunner in most regards. Although admittedly, not so much when it comes to the actual looks. And that plain plastic body may be susceptible to scratches, but at least the water repellent finish means your sphincter won't tighten uncomfortably whenever it starts to rain. And despite the spacious 6.3 inch display, it's actually one of the more compact phones in this roundup. Although I'm guessing you'll probably still make lots of use of that one-handed mode, which is very nifty indeed. And if you don't like heavy skins, then good news. The Moto G8 Plus serves up a clean stock version of Android with a few handy bonus features thrown on top like that one-handed mode. Media fans are in for a treat as well as that Full HD Plus screen pumps out punchy, pleasingly crisp visuals, while the stereo speaker setup, the headphone jack and the Dolby tuning combined for an enjoyable audio experience that beats most budget rivals. Performance is also respectable thanks to the Snapdragon 660 chipset and 4 gigs of RAM, so you can indulge in a bit of PUBG or whatever you like, as long as you keep those detail settings low. And certainly no complaints with the camera tech either. That pixel bin in tech and the AI smarts means that you get good looking photos and even quite testing conditions, while there's also a dedicated night mode when things get proper dark. Sadly, the ultra-wide angle lens can only be used for video, but it's still a great snapper for everyday shenanigans. Sadly, it is still that creaky old Android 9 OS on board though, and that really needs sorting out pronto. And the Moto G8 Plus is admittedly also beaten by most of the other handsets here for its battery, as well as a 4000 milliamp cell in the Moto compared with the 5000 you get in the likes of the Redmi. But that said, I never struggled to make it through a full day with the Motorola before I needed to recharge. If battery life is a huge priority for you, but you don't fancy that Xiaomi Redmi Note 9 Pro, then another option is the rather spankingly lovely Oppo A9 2020. This absolute unit packs in a 5000 milliamp cell just like the Xiaomi phone, and once again you'll get two full days of use if you don't go too wild. In fact, the battery life seems better here on the Oppo than it did on the Redmi, probably because it uses a more basic 720p resolution display which requires less power. But despite that dip in resolution, I still enjoyed kicking back with some Netflix or YouTube on the move. Those visuals are far from pixelated, and you get stereo speaker set up too. Meanwhile, performance performance is fine for a bit of light gaming thanks to the Snapdragon 665 chipset backed by 4 gigs of memory once again. And that solid ColorOS gaming mode is a welcome help too. The camera tech can be foiled by tricky conditions, but the Oppo A9 2020 can still churn out some good looking pics where you have an ultra wide angle alternative for more dramatic snaps. And make sure you don't sleep on the Oppo Reno 2Z either, which can be grabbed for around the 250 to 280 mark right now. Compared with the A9 2020, the screen is upgraded from IPS to AMOLED tech, while the resolution also gets a boost from HD to Full HD. So basically a sharper picture with better contrast and slightly more punchy colors too. And it's completely notch free on the Reno 2Z as well, thanks to that uber cute pop-up selfie cam. 
And sure, the 4000 milliamp battery ain't as flipping and enormous as the A9 2020, but no fear, this thing will happily last all day even with plenty of punishment, helped along by the energy efficient MediaTek chipset. So, so far we've seen budget smartphones from the likes of Xiaomi, Oppo and Motorola, but another rival that's well worth considering is Realme. They're getting bigger by the month. They actually operate under the same umbrella company as Oppo, and they once again offer insane value for money. This shiny specimen right here is the Realme 6, which can be snaffled right now starting from just 219 quid. It's one of the only budget smartphones out there to boast a proper full on 90 hertz display, which is absolutely stunning considering the teeny asking price. Everything just looks so creamy and smooth, helped along by the actually pretty good MediaTek Helio G90T chipset. And you can certainly indulge in a spot of light gaming if you like, no worries. The Realme 6's 4300 milliamp battery will keep you streaming, shooting, snapping, whatever, all day long, no problem. And you also get a fresh bit of the Realme UI slapped there on top of Android 10 as well, which to be fair, is basically Color OS by a different name. Alternatively, if you've got a bit more cash stuffed in the bank, then you can grab the even better Pro model. The Realme 6 Pro delivers a handful of upgrades over the standard phone, like Dolby Atmos support, a Snapdragon 720G chipset for improved gaming performance, and even a telephoto camera lens. It's definitely trouser moistening stuff for just 290 quid in the UK. As with the other phones in this best budget smartphones roundup, I fully reviewed the Realme 6 and the Realme 6 Pro, so definitely go check out those for all you need to know about these brilliant budget blowers. Alternatively, if you'd rather dip your ore into Samsung waters instead, then definitely check out the Galaxy A51, which is just underneath that £300 mark here in Blighty. One of the highlights of the A51 is definitely the spangly design, which fires rainbow hues right at your corneas whenever the shiny arse end catches the light. Flip the A51 over and the mighty 6.5 inch Super AMOLED screen is another winner, delivering a crisp and colourful view of your movies, games, whatever you like. Minus this tiny spec hole where the selfie cam resides. Samsung's Exynos chipset can generally handle everyday life without much of a fuss, and yeah, you can get given on the likes of PUBG Mobile wherever you roam, no worries. Battery life is pretty decent too as well, giving you a full day of use without too much of a grumble, although the Galaxy A51 is definitely beaten by the alternatives from Xiaomi, Oppo and Realme here. I also rather enjoy Samsung's One UI launcher, which basically packs in the same features you get from those premium super expensive Galaxy phones. And while the camera tech may not cope with tricky lighting, as well as the Realme or the Moto G8 Plus, it's still good enough for shooting everyday home movies and pics. And if you're all about the camera tech, well you can still grab the Pixel 3a for under 300 quid here in the UK as well, although I was kind of hoping we would have the Pixel 4a by now for sure. Still the year old Pixel 3a, happy birthday, delivers Google's incredible camera experience on a proper tight budget, so you can shoot great looking photos and crisp 4k video in almost any conditions. And the great news is that Google is continuing to update that camera app with new features all of the time to really push that hardware to its very boundaries. And I really like the rest of the Pixel 3a as well, from the increasingly rare compact form factor to the bright and poppy 5.6 inch OLED display. Like many of the other phones here, you have a proper headphone jack too, nice one. The Snapdragon 670 chipset offers pretty slick everyday performance, helped along by that stock Android 10 OS. You get a very similar software experience to those mega expensive Pixel 4 flagships, complete with regular updates and security patches. And if you're intrigued, then definitely go check out my long-term Pixel 3a review to see how it holds up in 2020. So that's my personal pick of some of the very best sub £300 budget smartphones you can grab yourself as we hit the midway point of one of the crappiest years in human history. Okay, crappiest of all time might be a bit of an exaggeration, but it has been rather turds. Of course, these are only phones that I've personally uh, tested and reviewed, so there might be other ones that I missed out. Definitely let me know your own personal picks of the best £300 and under smartphones down below. And of course, if you shop around, you're likely to find some great deals as well on flagships from a good couple of years ago that are now around that sort of price point as well. So again, if you spot any great deals, let us know in the comments. Always appreciate it. And if your budget is tighter than a Nat's bum hole, then definitely go check out my roundup of the best sub £200 smartphones. You can get some absolutely cracking bargains down there. Again, Again, from the likes of Realme and Xiaomi, and I'm hoping to put out a best £400 and under smartphone roundup very, very shortly. So please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell to be the first to see when that bad boy goes live. Please do have yourselves a lovely week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.